Hey guys, Seagull my house bidding you welcome. I'm going to try and do this video in one take as a kind of freeform deal. I have a lot to say about this uh, game. Not just about the game, but also about the uh, kind of the work around it and kind of the uh, what I believe might have been a bit of symbolism in the game. So we'll get right to it. Today I will be reviewing a game I beat recently on Twitter. One of my good friends was talking about games that he would like to see maybe remastered for the PlayStation 5 or that he might play on the PlayStation 5 games that were on the PlayStation 3. He mentioned uh, three games. I think one was uh, three games that I do agree with that could do with a uh, more wider audience coming to know about them. Uh, the Darkness, uh, Heavenly Sword, and this game right here, Dante's Inferno. Now, coincidentally, I had actually beaten this in the week previously. I think I beat it on Saturday, like, really, really recently. It's Tuesday that I'm filming this, so it's still fairly relevant in my mind, although... <laughs> I've already forgotten some things about it, that's how quickly I tend to forget some works. This is a action hack and slash game. Released in 2000 and... It says 2010, but I'm pretty sure it came out in 2009. Although if it did come out in 2010, it came out in 2010. It's an action hack and slash game. It was released on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. And... That's why I'll stop talking about the game for a little bit and start talking about the work it's based on because you need to kind of... If you don't know the work it's based on, it's a really weird game to just pick up and start playing. This is based on the Divine Comedy written by, and I have the Wikipedia up here to remind me of these things, uh, Dante Alighieri. This was written in, eight, in 1320. This is one of the oldest known uh, literary works. Still in publication, obviously, the Bible is much older, or the stories in the Bible are much older. But this is a very old work. It is about a man who is, it's about a poet who is traveling through a woods, and he comes across these monsters that stop him from progressing further out of the woods, so he has to go back in and... He can't escape these monsters until he meets a man named, uh, Virgil. I think it's Virgil. Let's look it up. I'm, I'm very sure that it's Virgil. Uh, yeah, the night before Good Friday. Sin, Leopard Man. Yeah, Virgil. Virgil is a man who lives on the, I think, first layer of hell. So that's for people who didn't have a, like, true conviction, something like that. And he says he can help him escape this place, but he has to follow him. He follows Virgil into a cave, and in the cave he starts descending down the various layers of hell. Now, what makes this book very interesting, and the PS3 game very interesting, is I believe this might be... I believe this game might be based on the oldest thing known. Like, I cannot think of a game off the top of my head that would be based on an older work. Obviously, you could say that there are games that take massive influence from the Bible, like, bloody Bible games on NES. Those weird ones made by Wisdom Tree, but it's... They're not... I guess they are kind of strictly based on certain books, but... Not really. They're not really retellings, they're just action platformers with Noah's Ark kind of stapled on there. It could be any kind of a game, while this this is very obviously Dante's Inferno. So the Divine Comedy, written by Dante Alighieri. He was writing writing it for a long time, but he published it in 1320, a year before his death. And even... It takes place in three parts. The first part is Inferno, where Dante the poet journeys through hell. The second part is uh, Purgatorio, 
where it's his journey through purgatory. I'm not too familiar with that one yet. And the third one is where he meets God in the afterlife. I don't actually know the name of that one. Paradiso, I've just looked at it. It, it sounds like a very interesting read. I did try to read Inferno, you know, the first part, but because it's written in ancient Italian translated into English, even modernized versions seem very disjointed, hard to follow, very difficult to read. I did give it a very honest go. <laughs> Eventually I ended up watching a, uh, there's a YouTube channel called Myths, Myths Mythologies, etc. And they went through the kind of overarching story of the novel. It's hard to call a novel, it's a narrative poem, I guess. I was reading, apparently, it's uh, it's even harder to read other works from the time because they were written in ancient Latin, which only the very privileged could read. While Italian was something that, obviously, not everyone could read back then, but those who could would have an easier time reading that than Latin, which is very interesting. It's possible he wanted to have as many people know the story as possible. Or maybe... He was a learned scholar, so it, it stands to reason that he knew Latin to some degree. I imagine most scholars back then would. But his, uh... His kind of dealings in life kind of play off in the novel. The various layers of hell are for people who have committed various sins. Uh, I won't go through all of them, but I think on one of the layers of hell there's a uh, place for people who kind of used God to further their own means, and he basically just slams every pope by putting them on their own certain layer of hell. <laughs> yeah, he was exiled by one of the popes, so I guess it's not too surprising. But yeah, that's enough about the book and its, and its writer and all of that. We're getting on to the game. It's just... I can't really think of another game that has a more interesting idea for its premise. If you guys can think of a game that has a very interesting idea for its premise based on like something that's in the real world in a way, definitely let me know. I don't think there's too many games based on like Christian mysticism. But yeah, it's a 3D action platformer hack and slash kind of deal. When it was released, it was called a God of War clone, and if you've played any of the God of War games, except for the most recent one, it is basically a cookie-cutter kind of reskinning of a God of War game, but that was an entire genre that was pretty popular for a while. There were quite a few games that copied the genre, and in a way you could say God of War is just a Devil May Cry copy. You know, they're, they're both very similar. But I like this. It's really, really good. Definitely check it out. Uh, the graphics have aged pretty well. Especially some of like the backgrounds and stuff. You can get lost in this game. There are a lot of like levels that look like paintings. In like a... Uh... I think it's a bit of a shame that they went with a realistic sort of art style for this game. They gave it the kind of graphics that they would give Dead Space. It's made by Visceral, so I guess they probably use the same engine. Same engine, probably not the same assets, but the monsters of Dead Space do bear a resemblance to the monsters of Hell, so take that for what you will. They changed various elements of the story. Dante is not just a poet lost in the woods, he's a uh, crusader. And he's gone on this holy crusade where he's basically just committed every sin imaginable and his family and loved ones have been slaughtered along the way in the uh, name of this crusade and he's always stuck to his guns that because the priest that led the crusade said it was alright that everything he did was uh, just and moral but when he meets the angel of death the angel of death tells him that no this is not the case and yeah, you're coming with me you're not going up, you're going down. Uh, through a 
a boss fight. This game starts with a boss battle, which is a bit interesting. Yeah, you actually kill the you kill death. I'm not sure what that means for all other people dying, but you kill death and take his scythe, which is the big weapon that you see on the cover. This is one of your main weapons in the game, as you go through the various layers of hell. You use the scythe, but you also get an item called a holy cross. And the Holy Cross is more of a uh, projectile style weapon. It's actually way better than the Scythe once you've leveled it up. What makes this game very unique, and I'm not sure if the developers were going for this, but you can use the Scythe and it's kind of a representation of like uh, death and violence, pestilence, war, stuff like that. Like it is a weapon of violence even though a Scythe is you know, it's first and foremost a farming tool, but I guess in the context of the game it might as well be a sword. And you can really beat the game very easily using the scythe, it's, it seems at first. It seems like leveling up the scythe is much more rewarding than leveling up the holy cross because you start doing more damage, you can do more combos, you get the ability to get magic back from when you beat an enemy, which means you can use more magic spells which deal more damage. After a while you can even get like health upgrades and stuff from leveling up the scythe. Well on the side of the Holy Cross you get a few abilities that don't seem too useful and honestly most of them aren't. I think most of the time I spammed circle and I was pretty alright using the Holy Cross, but I decided to go for a mostly kind of forgiveness run. There are various spirits you meet in the game that you can choose to absolve of their sins or punish. It seems a bit weird because, you know, Dante doesn't really have that power, but in the game he does. I mean, it's a video game. I guess he can do whatever he wants. He is the protagonist after all. But if you choose to uh, punish them, he kills them I guess he doesn't kill them because they're already in hell, but he punishes them with the scythe and they vanish into th thin air. And you get a bunch of points and you can level up either your bad side or your good side. And depending on what level you are, uh, you can unlock different abilities. I think you can get up to level 7 of either. You, know, you can get up to level 7 of bad, level 7 of good. I went for a mostly good run, the forgiveness run, where you forgive most of the souls you meet. Also with tougher enemies, you can choose to uh, punish them or absolve them as well. I choose mainly to absolve. I thought it might be interesting to go that route, see if anything different really happens. And the game actually became really easy to play after you do the forgiveness run for a while. The final boss was a bit challenging, trying to use the cross, because the holy... he has a a uh, ability where the Holy Cross doesn't really do anything to him. He actually bursts into light and does damage to you if you use the Holy Cross on him, which is strange, but you would think the devil would be... I guess it's not the devil, because the devil is the giant three-headed person. You fight some demon and it's... it is a good boss battle, but I don't really understand why you couldn't use the Holy Cross. But using the Holy Cross throughout the game and leveling it up makes it really, really powerful, and I can, I can see it being more powerful than the Scythe by the end because you can use it as a projectile weapon, and you level it up to an ability where every enemy you kill releases health. And it got to the point where I was basically never taking damage, and if I did take damage, I would just spam Circle to win, and this was on you know, one of the harder difficulties. This wasn't on Inferno, but this was on one of the hardest difficulties. But a very easy game after you've leveled up the right things. I imagine it's probably a bit harder if you level up the Scythe because you have to get in close. There are some enemies that are resistant to the Holy Cross, so you have to use the Scythe on them. And there's a uh, group of two enemies that I thought used that really well. You have to... They have a glowing thing above their head, and you can kill the person with the glowing thing above their head in order to... It's like a mage-wizard kind of thing. 
You kill the thing with the glowing thing above the head in order to gain access to killing these other enemies who are only susceptible to being killed after you've hit them with the uh, Holy Cross. So you hit them with the Holy Cross, it kind of brings them from a smoke state to a solid state, and then you whack them with the scythe to beat them. But you can't do it until you beat this other enemy, so they're free to get hits in on you until you've beaten this other one. It's a pretty cool idea for an enemy type. There are a lot of really good enemy types in this game. There's a lot of variety. There are these really fat enemies that like try to grab you and eat you and vomit sludge all over you. There are these like vile temptress women who will stand at the edge of the map and like flash themselves at you but if you're looking in that direction you kind of get locked in their gaze and you have to mash the circle button to escape. There are those kind of, uh, you have your general grunts, brutes, those kind of enemies where they're basically the same enemy but they take a few more hits. Some enemies have shields. Later in the late game they get flaming shields which you have to douse with the holy cross to put out and then you can hit it with the scythe to do actual damage. For a little bit I didn't understand, so for about 20 seconds I was just nailing these grunt enemies with the Holy Cross and I was wondering why I wasn't killing them. It's a very good game. A lot of very... It's very varied. There's never going to be a segment where you're kind of getting bored. There's never going to be a section where you are wishing the section would end and you can go to another section. There's, there is one section in the game where there's a gauntlet. But the uh, gauntlet's pretty easy if you've leveled up the right things. Like the Holy Cross, if you've leveled that up to max, then the gauntlet is really, really easy. I imagine it would be a bit of a pain in the ass with only the scythe, though. So you play as Dante, this Holy Crusader, and he's going after his wife who was killed by a mercenary and sent to hell he's going to try and save her I'm not i'm pretty sure he saves her by the end of the game i don't remember exactly i'm pretty sure he saves her but he absolves her soul when you absolve someone they kind of vanish in this holy light so he does that to her with other enemies it's like defeating them but with her it's like she wants it done so i guess it's not too bad and at the end of the game, after you beat the final boss, this big demon, uh, you end up climbing out of hell and ending up in, a, I guess, purgatory. But there was never a sequel to this one, even though it said to be continued at the end. It's a shame because I don't think Visceral Studios really had the means to make a sequel for this one. After this, they were right on to Dead Space 3. Dead Space 3 did well, but flopped for what they wanted it to do, and so EA Studios just closed them. It's what happens to a lot of developers. I'm sure if this was a PS2 game it would have gotten a sequel, but on PS3 I guess it was just... it wasn't going to happen. It's only one player. It's got network features, but I don't think they really do anything. At the beginning of the game it's said in the main menu you know, coming soon, all of these different features like uh, level creation, stuff like that, and I don't think they ever implemented it. This was back in the day during a time where uh, season passes were a thing. So I think somewhere in the manual is like a season pass, that, not a season pass, a uh, online activation code that you have to use to access online stuff. Yeah, here you go. Stay in the game and register with EA, one of them. Seems like a lot of them had it. I remember God of War Ascension released with it and you couldn't... I don't think you could access a lot of the online features like playing with your friends unless you had bought the game brand new or bought a online activation code, which was ridiculous. I'm definitely, definitely glad they did away with that, although the current business practices with uh, video games is a bit shocking. That's why I got out of the new stuff. I'm not getting a PS5. I'm arguing with myself whether I'll ever actually get another PS4. I did have one for a little bit, but I just... I wasn't playing it much, so I decided to sell it, and there's a lot of games I want to play, and a lot of games are cheaper now. But I don't know if I'll ever get one. 
I'm still going back and playing all of the games that I missed on PS3. So Dante's Inferno is one that I finished. And it's a great game. Really, really excellent game. I might play The Darkness next, or maybe uh, Space Marines, Warhammer 40k. Because I've beaten all of the games that people tell me I have to play on this system, and now I'm just chugging through trying to finish random games that maybe I never got around to. Or oh, I actually have played this once before. I played it on PSP. I mean, playing a game on PSP and PS3 is just a completely different experience. So yeah, check out Dante's Inferno, and I guess I'll find that video. See what it's called. Dante's Inferno Summary. Yeah, it's the top one here. Dante's Inferno, a summary of the Divine Comedy Part 1. It's it's worth going through this, maybe as you're going through the game as well, because there are some things in the game that it gives a passing mention to that are pretty important to the story. You know, I remember when it mentioned, like, uh, Simon... Simology? No, Simothy. You know, the one about the Pope's going to hell for using the church to kind of build their own fame. You know, in the book it kind of really discusses that in detail, and in this summary it mentions it as well. But in the game it's like, oh yeah, they're here for Simothy, and they don't actually tell you what Simothy is. Most of it's pretty obvious though, like one... One layer is for greed, one layer is for wrath, one layer is for, like, uh, people who committed suicide. It's like this forest where everyone's gotten turned into a tree, and the birds are picking at them. But it, it is very much a game worth playing, especially if you have even a passing fancy in uh, Christianity. It's pretty important work, and the, and the video game is, like, an, ad an adapted piece of that, I guess. There aren't too many works adapted on that. But yeah, check it out. It It's excellent. It's a shame that back in the day it was really written off as a God of War clone when, although the gameplay is a clone of God of War, the story in that is really completely different. Especially since it's based on something you know, so much older. Although I guess Greek mythology is older than... uh. Christian mythology in a way. Kinda, I guess they're kind of based on the same thing in, in the end. You know, a lot of stories kind of mixed together. A lot of the stuff in Dante's Inferno, a lot of the stuff is ripped straight from uh, Greek mythology, like the uh, the River Styx. I don't think it's called the River Styx, but it, it's in Dante's Inferno. But yeah, I'll let you guys go. Thanks for watching. Uh, I don't know why I'm not making new videos, I'm just not feeling it. It's, uh... I can't really say anything's going on, life is good. I'm working a lot, I'm enjoying my life. I'm just enjoying married life, it's really amazing. There's a lot to enjoy, and life is continuing on with or without YouTube. I know some people on here miss me, but it, it really isn't enough to continue doing it. I just... You know, the views aren't there, the comments aren't there, you know. I feel like sometimes I'll make a video, release it, and then it's just gone. You know, no one watches it, no one really cares. And when that happens, you don't really want to make another one. It's like, well, fuck, I wasted my time doing that, why would I do it again? You know, it's like if you spent... You know, these videos don't take a long time to make, you know, like, 30 minutes to film a video, you know, maybe couple hours to upload, that's it, but you know, it's still time out of my day that I could be dedicating to something else. I don't get anything from YouTube, it's when I was doing it when there was a big retro gaming community on YouTube, like so many people were doing pickups and game hunting and stuff, then it was fun. It was it felt like I was part of a community but I'm I'm kind of out of that community and I don't think many people are really left in the community. There's so many people that left. 
and so many people that make different kinds of videos now that I don't watch. Even the people I'm subbed to still, you know, like I haven't watched a Bithead 1000 video in months. <sighs> They're just too long, they don't feel special anymore. Used to be Bithead 1000 would upload a couple of videos a year and they would be special events. Now it's a video every other day and I don't really care. Same thing with other videos, it's like, well, I know if this is the pot call and the kettle black, but how many pickup videos can you watch before you kind of get bored of them, you know? I still do game hunt every now and again. You know, I go to cash converters if I'm just passing by one, but I don't really go out of my way to go to them anymore. I'm chasing more real experiences in my life. Well, that's it. See you in my house, bid you guys farewell. If I do want to make another video, I'll just make one. You know, there's not really much to, to really say. That's it. Thanks for watching. Catch us later.